I've decided to start doing more podcasting. Um, it's more convenient for me, but also it's subjects that often don't have any visualization needed. Um, this one's, for example, is think different. What I mean is for if you're working in a corporate environment or you're going through life following the same path as everyone else, which is the buy a house, buy a car, 2.4 children, etc., then if you think differently, then that's not the life for you. But the importance is how do you change it? And a lot of it starts before you even hit working age because your education, is it funded? Have you had to get into debt to get your education in the first place? Have you found that your parents have sort of pressed you into a specific career, etc. Because you need to change the way you think and the way the people around you think, or at least accept that you're different. Um, from my viewpoint, I've always found that it's much better to do what makes you happy than what makes you money. It often confuses people why I pick and choose the work I do rather than following the money trail. But the money trail, although it's nice to have money in the bank, it's also nice to have the freedom of choice. Leaving um, the Carillion that I was working for, it was a sigh of relief leaving, leaving the company due to the way it works. They've actually tried to stop me actually talking about the actual business itself and its many, many failings. But it's not that I'm talking from a chip on my shoulder, but purely because they don't get it. They don't get life. They don't understand people. Um, when somebody makes problems for other people then just cannot grasp while why those people aren't happy with the business, then you have an issue. And there's often I'm all right, Jack mentality, which is the corporate mentality which is why I'd much rather be different and have the ability to think of the people around me, understand that if they're not paid on time, that they can't go on holiday, they may have to get a loan for the mistakes we made, even though they've actually obligated to actually do what they were told. I see people, I don't see a number, I don't see an inconvenience to, to disrupt my day. And... That's why I don't fit in the corporate world, to be honest. Um, but it is about changing pretty much everything. If you look at the context relating to consumerism, most people are buying stuff that they don't need, but also getting debt for it. Yet, we have zero debt here. Um, we don't have any debt whatsoever. The bank, bear in mind, I haven't actually had a physical job in Spain offer a loan already set up on my account for 16,000 euros. Not that I'm taking it, but the fact is, at a click of the button, I could have 16,000 euros in my bank account loaned to me almost instantly. Yet, I haven't even got a job in Spain. Um, that's where people go wrong. People assume the banks and stuff were there to help them. Banks are not there to help anybody but themselves. It's why when they make big mistakes, we still end up bailing them out. So don't assume because you can get the money that you should have it. What you should assume is you should never need a loan in your life. Well, you should try to do as much as possible to avoid getting any loan. The only <coughs> excuse me, loan that you should be possibly contemplating is one for a business expansion or buying your first home. And beyond that, you should always be working with the money you've got coming in, not the money that's negative equity. That is one big change for many people. Understanding that what you earn is what you should be spending, in fact, you should be saving some of it, is a big change. I know some people talk about saving 10% every year, uh, sorry, every pay packet, but... I would actually say if you have no savings whatsoever, it's not enough. 10% uh, is not enough. You should already have a nest egg 
of working towards a, a year's salary in your bank account. Ideally, you want three or five years in your bank account, but the first thing you need to do is start building those savings up. But once they start building, they start building themselves. You start to see that you're gaining interest instead of giving it. Um, you start to see that the more money you have, the more banks and other organizations want to invest your money so that they can make money making you money. It's why you hear people say that the first million is the hardest when they become millionaires. Because once you start making certain amounts, um, some of the banks in the UK, for example, if you've got 40,000 pounds in them, they'll actually give you a financial advisor that will make that money work far better than the average person. Um, they Well, they don't entertain the guy on the high street. They, they are specifically geared towards customers that have money. There is banks within banks. If you take RBS, RBS has several subsidiaries that are specialist banks. Some of them you need over half a million pounds just to be a customer. But they will make you some serious money. So you need to change the way you look at money. You need to see that you're better off saving it. But also if you're spending it, spending it in the right places. I know a lot of people fritter money away with things like fast food and um, coffee at Starbucks and this sort of stuff. Myself, I like my cup of tea at different restaurants. I like eating out. But generally, I do not do chain food. I'm not a fan of chain food. I know I end up in KFC and McDonald's from time to time. But that's predominantly because of the kids, you know, because they, they want to eat there. But even then, we do not eat there weekly. We do not even eat there monthly. It's probably even bi-monthly um, because it's not important to us. We know it's a waste of money and the food quality is poor. We're better off spending good money on good food and eating at home. Or good money on good food at a good restaurant. Or even not spending it on food. Spending it on something that of value to the family. Education or something else that's got more worth. A family camping weekend is of more value than going to McDonald's twice a week. Now, it may sound a little bit uh, far-fetched, but when you tally up the cost of a family meal at McDonald's twice a week and then add that up for a month, you're getting close to what it would cost to take the family away for a weekend. So it's how you analyze everything and look at what you have and what you can achieve. This is why it's important to think differently. Look at things differently. Analyze it. If you're not happy at work, what needs to be changed? If you're in a job you hate, you need to change the job. If you're in a job you hate but can't leave it, you need to work a way of making money on the side to the point that that makes more money than your current vacation so that you can actually change. Um, this is why I do a lot of stuff on the internet because... At some point, I'm going to hit that threshold where I do not need to get up in the morning and go for a job. Um, at the moment, I can do it biannually because I can make enough money in one year to last two. Because we don't splurge on anything really. We invest most of our stuff. It's how you need to look at things. You need to see that there's more to life than you're currently seeing. You need to change your perspective on everything. You need to see that a new car is nothing more than a huge expense. The average wealthy person does not buy a brand new car unless it's a tax write-off. They generally buy cars that are um, ex-dealer, um, have low mileage, etc. They can often be cars that have been sold in-house to um, car companies to falsify the figures on sales so they may have cars that have been owned by somebody for six months but it never left the car car park it's just been an inside trade because what's happened is if you hit say 12 car sales for a month maybe they give you a free car so you sold 11 and maybe you bought another one and then they gave you another one as well so that's just an example but 
there's many incentives for salespeople to stimulate their figures, or should we just say falsify. The reality is there's a lot more to the world than we see. There's a lot going on around us where things are sometimes shunned. An example of this is a friend's cleaning business. Uh, because, I, I mean, even my internet troll mentions me working in cleaning. I don't actually work in cleaning, but I have no problem with the business whatsoever because it's a very viable one. Here in Spain, if you're cleaning an apartment, you're talking 50 euros an apartment, you know, when you do a rental transfer. So the fact is you could do four in a day and earn 200 euros. That's not a bad income when the average income in this area seems to be about 700 a month. So there's a lot of incentive to do stuff people do not like doing. I got into the maintenance trade because it paid well. While other people were going, oh, you, you're you doing carpentry, you're doing this, I work in the office, etc. They were lucky to make 20,000 pounds a year. I was taking home 76,000. I was buying new cars, etc while they were still paying off their college fees. I have to admit, being younger, you make those mistakes of frittering your money away. I'd be in a much better position now if I'd invested it instead of spending it, which is why this video is important. It's never too soon. Ah, this podcast is important. The sooner you start saving, the sooner you can start investing, the sooner you can start doing what you want to be doing. One thing I will say is just don't stretch yourself too far because you start to miss the importance of things in life. If you start to work double shifts, etc., to accumulate wealth, at the same time, stop spending time with the family, stop going and play football with your son on the Sunday, etc., etc., you're sacrificing a lot of stuff that you shouldn't be. There's always tomorrow. There's always a ability to be flexible instead of doing an extra 20 hours a week maybe just do 10 it takes twice as long fair enough but you still have a life and this is the important thing having a life and for me it's about family it's about doing the stuff you want to do it's about being in the places you want to see and experience it's about tasting good food it's about being able to make enough income to be happy, at the same time, zero stress levels. If you can't get beyond that, then, you know, where are you going in life? And that's why you need to sit and analyze where you want to be and start aiming for it. Don't aim for it tomorrow, aim for it today. Start, start making small adjustments and think differently. Look at things differently understand things a little bit differently than you currently do the small things are important the small things like seeing the kids at the weekend the, the small things about spending time with your wife um, getting home on time from work so you can cuddle up on the sofa and watch a movie with the wife rather than coming in late from work and your wife's already in bed the small things make the difference the big one that most people will struggle with today is ridding themselves of debt. There is some sacrifice with that, but if you turn around and focus on it, you can get out of debt quite quickly, but I would never say easily. Debt was accumulated too easily. Getting rid of it is much, much harder. Hope you enjoyed this podcast, and if you listen to the end, give me some feedback, um, because I'll do more of these if people are actually interested in hearing them. All right. Thanks for listening.